All right, so let's get back to our main example here um, of the uh, the lady running and jumping over the barrels with the guy chasing her. So you can see the top-down view compared to the camera view there. So with this instance, so this is one I made earlier, obviously, um, I that was the equivalent of Super Simple Man for this version. So I'm, because you can see I've packed out the scene, I'm, I've chosen the camera, I've animated the camera, I'm now gonna pop into the camera to make sure that that's all lined up with the path of the Super Simple Man. So the object path is animated correctly. And then once that's done, um, I use the exactly the same as last time. Uh, I've done rough my rough layers over that. And you can see how rough they are again. They really, really are rough. Um, it's just there to feel it out. So you'll see a bit of a kind of a time lapse type thing happening here now. Um, so yeah, just, just working out those shapes, working out the, each individual keyframe with her uh, sliding on the floor, getting up, coming towards camera, and then eventually leaping over the barrels in the foreground. So this isn't within the camera, now it's within the camera. Um, you can kind of pop in and out of camera mode to not camera mode, depending on whatever works for you. So once that kind of rough is laid in then, and I'm happy enough with the flow of that, that feels good. Uh, then I'm popping in once again to make new layers and to start cleaning up the uh, the artwork for the cleanup layer. As you can see, I've set the uh, the other actual layers quite low in opacity um, so that I can clearly see the, the line work that I need to work on. Not too much visual interruption. And here's another time lapse of uh, the rest of the cleanup. Blender's got this really cool modifier. Um, I'll talk about modifiers at another point, but you can add this modifier to it that actually, it it's always seems to be always recording what order you draw things in. So you can add like a little time-lapse thing to any of, uh, to, to the grease pencil, and it will play it back to you in the order you actually drew it. Then I'm popping back in the camera to see how that all looks from within the angle that I've chosen and it all looks nice and clean and in position. The contact points look close enough. Um, so yeah, that's all working there. Next thing in would be the, the fills and I've already done those. I'm not going to go through the one, one by one. Um, yeah, that's where it looks like fills. So it stands out nicely across the back against the background. Um, so then we've got the other guy. So this is me pathing in the other guy who kind of runs after her and like shoots. She's, he's supposed to be shooting after her. Uh, and then we're in a different angle here. You can see the contact points on the floor. He's less developed than she is because he's way off in the background. And then this is the final image. So what we're doing here now, again, uh, like we did earlier, was, okay, so I've chosen those angles. I've worked it all out. The animation's all worked out. But I still have all of the flexibility that I want to look for other camera angles to utilize for different cuts or to just alternatives. So this is one I've chosen here. It's a close-up behind, coming from behind the barrel. So she slides into shot and I'm keyframing the camera so that it just eases out by the time that she's standing. And again, here's the final render. But, you know, we can go way further than that. We can pull right back. Let's see where it breaks. Let's pull right back and start slinging the camera around to see how well this holds up from multiple angles. It holds up pretty well there. When you're really high, obviously they look like cardboard cutouts. It's not gonna hold up great there, but that information is still valid. Those are 3D objects in 3D space. So that, that can be handed over to a layout team, or it can be used as a plan view for a layout team. And you can even come right the way around to behind here. Obviously the artwork is backwards. We kind of, we should, we'd have to make new grease pencil layers on top of it in order to draw the detail on the back of them. But still, it still works, right? And you kind of you can go all the way around it like this and just try and find interesting angles. It all still works. This level of flexibility before, during, and after the fact for a 2D air is incredible. It would mean that you could block out a scene. You could just look for angles with the director. Bonus round, interpolation mode, difference between constant and linear. Okay, so linear, by default uh, is what your object modes and animations and keyframes will be set at. So that means that it slides smoothly 
through the environment. Can you see the, because that's happening, you get the kind of the feet skating. And this is where you get like previs skatey man, yeah? So if you want to stop that and you want it to kind of pop, 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 pose to pose to pose, uh, to look, I personally think it looks more natural. You highlight all the keyframes, right click, interpolation mode, and then change the constant. It's got a little step symbol. And that means it just steps to each of the keyframes. Do, 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 do. You will have, actually have to make that happen in the object mode though. Um, so kind of line up your grease pencil layers and then add keyframes on your object mode and step those. As with everything, those two different modes can be used effectively for different things. Linear, for instance, is excellent if you want things to be flying around really smoothly or you, or you do want something to be sliding down a hill or something like that. But I think uh, constant works really well when you've got foot to ground contact or you want something to really deliberately interact with a piece of environment.